So, we have found out more about dopamine and somewhat about norepinephrine in the last class. If you recall that dopamine, norepinephrine and epinephrine are part of the same group of neurotransmitters, the catecholamines and norepinephrine is manufactured from dopamine and it is one step synthesis moving from dopamine to norepinephrine. And we found out how important norepinephrine is that it has a diverse and a diffuse uh, projections going up into the cerebral cortex and another group of projections going down into the brainstem area and the spinal cord. You also found out that it has two major pathways, the dorsal and the ventral pathway and it is involved therefore in a wide range of behaviors, in the modulation, in the interaction of and therefore in the control of most of the behaviors that you can think of. You also found out that it has two different kinds of receptors, the alpha receptors and the beta receptors. And to simplify life for you, we told you there were two kinds of alpha receptors and two kinds of beta receptors and they worked in different places at different uh, controls and did were controlled by different uh, neurochemicals or chemical uh, neuropharmacological processes. We also talked about the behaviors that norepinephrine controlled or was involved in and we talked about arousal and very clearly you must understand that norepinephrine is not just behavioral excitation or behavioral arousal, it is both behavioral arousal as well as EEG arousal. As can be seen from the recordings and of course drug manipulations. If we give monoamine oxidase inhibitors, we do not see this arousal. Then the question is, which you have very rightly thought of, that perhaps it is due to dopamine. No, if we deplete dopamine by either 6-hydroxydopamine or by some other measure, we reduce the amount of dopamine that is available and increase the amount of norepinephrine available, we see the response. And on the other hand, if we reduce norepinephrine and we increase dopamine by giving disulfiram or other blocking agents like FLA63, which block the process or breakdown of dopamine into norepinephrine. So, we have a buildup of dopamine and a lowering of the levels of norepinephrine. We do not see this response. So, very clearly the evidence accumulated by pharmacological and other manipulations show that norepinephrine is responsible for behavioral and EEG excitation. And one other piece of evidence is if intraventricular injections of dopamine are given, they also lead to behavioral excitation. Very interesting. Then I talked about the conditioned avoidance, which is a part of the conditioned learning paradigms where animals learn to avoid certain parts of the cage or certain actions when they are conditioned to do so by giving electrical shocks. So, they avoid electrical shock in order to avoid that particular nasty consequences. And what if we completely abolish norepinephrine? That response which is learnt to the point of overlearning is gone, which indicates to us that perhaps norepinephrine is involved in learning and memory and we will talk about it a little later when we go into learning and memory. But again, how do we confirm that it is norepinephrine? If we reduce norepinephrine but do not or increase the levels of dopamine but again disulfiram and FLA63, the response is changed, but if we reduce dopamine and increase norepinephrine, the response is not affected. So, 
by blocking the synthesis of norepinephrine, we abolish the response. And if we do not change norepinephrine, the response is maintained. Very interesting. Further, we talked about stress. And I told you the stress awakening, stress induced awakening, rato ko jagna, neende na ana, parishani me neende na ana, again is norepinephrine. So their norepinephrine levels rise and they increase. The norepinephrine increases when you are awake because of stress. And in the same manner, when stress is induced by foot shock or electrical shock to animals, we see larger amounts of norepinephrine and norepinephrine turnover within the brain, which is more is manufactured and more is turned into metabolites. So, what is this? This tells us that norepinephrine is therefore important in some form of this arousal mechanism. Furthermore, if ECT, which is electroconvulsive therapy, which is the therapy of choice for depression and those patients who are not responding to any medication, ECT is the last resort. It has been found that they do respond to ECD. And it has been found very interestingly that it is the levels of norepinephrine that rise in the brain, especially in the forebrain, because of the ECT. So, again, piece of evidence that you have arousal and enhanced alertness because of norepinephrine levels, enhanced norepinephrine levels. Further, during trauma, you see people going through sleeplessness, through this emotional feelings and this excitation. That reaction is again, trauma of all kinds, is related to heightened levels of norepinephrine activity in the brain. So, two major behaviors that we have seen, learning avoidance of avoidance behavior and stress, very important part of our lives, are being modulated by norepinephrine. Then, another very, very important part of our living, our life, is feeding. And feeding, you and I cannot think of life without food, right? And there are signals that you eat and then you stop eating, right? And we talked about it, that within the hypothalamus, there is a region which tells you to eat, which is the lateral hypothalamus. And in the hypothalamus, there is a neighboring region which tells you when to stop, which is the ventromedial hypothalamus. So, they both balance out once it's eat. One says stop, one says eat, one says stop. Okay. So, scientists have done a lot of research in the 60s and 70s, and there is no doubt about it that these two systems work in conjugation to each other. But then, what is the neurotransmitter which is working with these neuroanatomical locations to balance out the feeding? Leibowitz, whom I must elaborate. I admire most because once I saw her and I saw this beautiful woman with long ankle length, beautiful hair and red lipstick and I said, she couldn't be a scientist. And she plays a, a harp in the New York Philharmonic Orchestra whenever time permits her. So, a well-rounded scientist as you may say. So, Sarah Leibovitz did experiments in the 70s and she is well known authority on feeding. Her experiments have confirmed that norepinephrine influences the inhibition of lateral hypothalamus. It blocks the inhibition of lateral hypothalamus. So, animals feel the need to eat and therefore they eat. So, if lateral hypothalamus is stimulated by norepinephrine, animals eat. Very simple, which means that appropriate amounts of norepinephrine are required 
to initiate feeding or to stop feeding. And we can see this because experiments were done where norepinephrine induced feeding was blocked by phentolamine, which is the alpha receptor blocker. Very clean, nice experiments that norepinephrine is therefore modulating feeding as well. Then there is a very important behavior that I talked about, very unusual, and we saw these pictures uh, in the early part of our uh, studies on brain. And I showed you that little rat which was pressing the lever so that it could give injections of electrical currents to its brain, electrical self stimulation, and it is also known as intracranial stimulation, which is ICS. ICS is, of course, why would anybody, why would a rat press a lever and leave food and leave water and leave companions and just keep pressing that lever so that it gets that uh, stimulation through that electrical current continuously and going bling, 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 bling all the time. So, why would the rat do that? Because it must have a very powerful reinforcement a very powerful feeling of ecstasy or reward or whatever you may call it. In humans, it has been uh, related to a huge amount of this gush of euphoria and ecstasy, extreme happiness, extreme fulfillment and in animals, there must be a similar feeling or a similar response. So, we could call it an area for positive reinforcement or an area for reward. And interestingly, the areas that can correspond, the mapping that has been done for the ICS or the intracranial self stimulation areas closely correspond to the distribution of norepinephrine and dopamine. So, if you block norepinephrine by giving alpha methyl paratyrosine, which drops the level of norepinephrine. You also see the drop in the bling, bling, bling. Animal is no longer interested, will no longer play the pedal. Why? Because the neurotransmitter which gave this rush, this feeling, this euphoria is gone. So, therefore, we have found out that it is norepinephrine which then is the basis of the interaction of reward. And of course, link it with learning. Learning ke saath reinforcement hoti hai na? Tabhi karte ke reward ke feeling hoti hai. So, is positive reinforcement, positive rewards, reward sites are also related. Kaise aur evidence kya hai iski? Of course, we've seen this bling, 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 clause one or premise one. We see this happening. Norepinephrine is responsible. Okay. So, we give alpha methyl paratyrosine, reduce norepinephrine, reduce this reward, bling, bling, bling action. Okay. And then, what would you do if you were this great scientist? I know what you would do. You would then inject an agonist of norepinephrine to see if this reward feeling comes back. And this ICS come back. Yes, that is what scientists have done in the great laboratories around the world. Yes, they did. They gave the alpha receptor isomers, not dopamine, not 5-HT, not the beta isomers or the beta receptors, only the alpha receptors. And it was reversed by the alpha isomers. And how do we know that it is only the alpha receptors and the norepinephrine? Again, another piece of evidence by using the push pull cannulas every time the animal goes pressing and feeling that reward, you pull from that area, from the stimulating area or the stimulating electrode around that, pull out metabolites. And what metabolites would you think you would find? The metabolites that you think you will find are exactly the same which other scientists have found, which is norepinephrine. So, the push pull cannulas in the ventricle with the ICS electrodes 
have also shown that there is an increased release of norepinephrine with ICS and specially the dorsal bundle, the bundle on the top more than the ventral bundle that is involved. And where do you remember? I showed you the picture and you have it before you. The dorsal bundle, look at it very closely. The dorsal bundle is going into the cortices, right? It is going into the limbic areas. So, therefore, the reward feeling comes from a higher level of cortical functioning as well as the emotional states. Now that we talk about reward, so norepinephrine high gives rise to reward and therefore we go into another area, a major area where norepinephrine is involved and that is depression, a very serious pathology. Of course, there are a wide range of distribution of symptoms. Catecholamine hypothesis of depression implicates or involves the modulation by norepinephrine. Long term antidepressant therapy or treatment in animals has caused reduction in norepinephrine and norepinephrine stimulated cyclic AMP. And here the beta receptors are involved, not the alpha receptors. Antidepressants treatment increase the availability. So, depression decreases. In depression, we see a decrease in norepinephrine and decrease in available norepinephrine at the level of receptors. So, it means when a person is depressed, norepinephrine is reduced. See how it, can, see it balances when it is reward and alertness that is norepinephrine is rising and when a person is depressed, norepinephrine is going down. Okay, so what do we do? Let us do an experiment. We give antidepressants like monoamine oxidase inhibitors and antidepressants increase the availability of norepinephrine at the synaptic level. Again, making norepinephrine, rising the levels of norepinephrine available so that they can cross the synapse. So, more and more norepinephrine is available with antidepressants. Again, linking depression with norepinephrine levels. Depression was also long time ago treated by a major tranquilizer which was rezepine and in our language it would be revolfia serpentine or revolfia alkaloids. And these were treated in the Indian subcontinent. Depression was treated uh, with this particular herb and this particular, uh, you know, uh, medicine, the traditional medicine, out of which came rezepine. Rezepine on a long term basis creates a depression like syndrome. Why? Go back and remember the red rezepine ruptures all vesicles of dopamine, norepinephrine and serotonin. So, all three neurotransmitters are down to the lowest level. So, which means if these three neurotransmitters are gone, then depression or reduced depression will be a consequence. However, antidepressants such as ipronizid, which is a monoamine oxidase inhibitor increase the brain concentrations of two major neurotransmitters, norepinephrine and serotonin, but mainly norepinephrine and we will talk about it a little later. No, serotonin is involved, but in a major way it is norepinephrine which is involved. So, you have now become an expert on dopamine and norepinephrine, both major neurotransmitters, both catecholamines. I am not going to be talking about epinephrine because epinephrine has a role, but these two transmitters, neurotransmitters have 
come out in eminence or have become more important and are visibly important in playing a role in the behaviors and more research is going on on these two a neurotransmitters. The third neurotransmitter that I will talk about and it is a very interesting neurotransmitter, this is serotonin. Serotonin, it is also an amine, a monoamine. Remember we talked about it uh, about three lectures ago. It is a monoamine, a single amine molecule is attached here, but it is a different kind of an amine. It is an indole amine. Indole amine, which is also given another name to complicate matters, and the name that we give to it is 5 hydroxy tryptamine amine. 5 because the molecule of the in the fifth position has a hydroxy molecule. So, 5 hydroxy tryptamine, just remember 5 HT. That is easy to remember, right? So, serotonin, which is 5 HT. So, do not you do remember indolamine because that differentiates it from catecholamines. This is different classification. Now, this is a very interesting neurotransmitter as I began. It is a substance which is found all over the body. So, what is unusual? Like norepinephrine is also found in the adrenal gland. What is unusual is that this is a substance which is found in the clotted blood in the vessels, blood vessels. It is responsible for constriction of the smooth muscle organs. Can you list at least three smooth muscle organs that you, you remember? Hmm. Okay, heart is one. What else? intestines and what else? Okay, you think about the third one, but yes, you have of course, blood vessels being another part, but think about the third organ while I continue. So, the substance which is found in the clotted blood vessels, which has been shown in the petri dish to lead to a powerful constriction of smooth muscle organs. You know what a constriction is? There is muscles contract and ex constrict, contract and constrict, right? Expand and constrict. So, constriction of muscles, that is how blood is pumped throughout the body and throughout the brain. Spre expands and constricts. And how do you think your intestines? And the digestive system work. Have you thought about it? Yes, there is also a constriction and expansion. So, there is the smooth muscle there as well in the gut, in the stomach, and this smooth muscle contraction is also due to serotonin or 5 HT. So, smooth muscle wherever they are. The power that comes to them for constriction is due to 5-HT or due to serotonin. And of course, those who have someone who has high blood pressure must know that this constriction of the blood vessels therefore leads to blood pressure, increases in blood pressure, right? Constriction of the blood vessels increases the blood pressure. So, serotonin is also a possible cause of blood pressure and it is also implicated in migraine headaches because of the constriction of the blood vessels coming to the brain. It is found in the intestinal mucosa and it is the substance in it lead the research. There are two groups of Actually, discovery was made by two groups. One was in America and one was in Italy. In the US, they were doing research on identifying the possible causes of blood pressure. And so, therefore, they were doing research on the blood vessels and the constriction of the blood vessels. In Italy, on the other hand, there were research groups which were working on the smooth muscle and the constriction of the smooth muscle in the intestine. 
and therefore, the smooth muscle in the intestine research that was done in Italy found a substance which acted upon these smooth muscles in the petri dish. It was called enteramine there. So, the name, the fourth name for this substance, this neurotransmitter was enteramine. Why? It was because it was found in the digestive system, in the gastrointestinal uh, smooth muscle and in intestinal mucosa. On the other hand, in the US, the possible cause of high blood pressure, the constrictor, the, neuro, the, the, the chemical that constricts and lead to powerful constriction of the smooth blood vessels was called serotonin. Eventually, there is a resolution to call it serotonin or 5-HT, which is 5-hydroxytryptamine. And the 5-hydroxytryptamine molecule resembles LSD, lysergic acid diethylamide, which is a very powerful hallucinogenic compound. So, there we need we have seen that there is something very interesting things happening within this or modulation of a large variety of functions by this one neurotransmitter. And this neurotransmitter, this serotonin, this 5-hydroxytryptamine is found in high concentration in things that you eat. Let me name a few bananas, pineapples, red meat and milk. And remember these, at least remember milk and remember red meat, because we are going to be talking about this when we talk about behaviors which are being modulated by serotonin. Now, the daily concentration of serotonin depends on how many bananas you eat, how many glasses of milk you have had or how much red meat you have had. So, the concentration is dependent upon your daily diet. Very interesting. And we will tell you how it is dependent on the daily diet. Then we will come to it later, but let me also elaborate that brain has about 1 to 2 percent of the total serotonin that is found in the system and about 90 percent of the serotonin is in the intestinal area. Massively, body has its own serotonin my factory here and it works on that. But then, if you look at in the brain, 1 to 2 percent, within that 1 to 2 percent, 50 percent of the serotonin is found in the pineal gland. Now, why would it be found in the pineal gland? So, the highest concentration of serotonin in the brain, in the pineal gland, which is about 50 percent of the total brain serotonin found and in 90 percent in the gastrointestinal area and especially the enterochromaffin cells of the intestine. You do not have to remember the cells, but remember the percentage. Now, what does it mean if you look at the pineal gland? Why would there be such a high concentration of serotonin in the pineal gland. This is again a very interesting behavior that serotonin is involved in. And serotonin is related to a substance that you have heard about. And perhaps if you look at these advertisements of fair and lovely and those whitening creams, they have a substance known which is they are going to block. You know the dark pigmentation of my skin, what is it due to? 
that pigmentation, the dark pigmentation of the skin is due to melatonin, serotonin, melatonin, some similarity? Yes, they are related. So, serotonin and melatonin are related in the fact, let me just elaborate and go over the process. You get tryptophan from the blood, tryptophan is the precursor like tyrosine was the precursor for catecholamines. It is transformed into tryptamine, it is transformed into N-acetyl serotonin, it is transformed into melatonin within the pineal gland, this, this is the manufacturing process. And melatonin is affected by your light and dark cycles, which means the 5-hydroxytryptamine levels, 5-HT levels change with the level of light or darkness. Abhi aapne kabhi dekha na ki dhoop mein na baithe, to rang saaf hona lag jata hai na? Kehte na dhoop mein na jata baith to rang jal jayega. Aur wo jo saare west ke log ja ke dhoop mein baithe hai tan karne ke liye, to kya hai melatonin induce kar rahe hai, melatonin se darken kar rahe hai apne skin ke pigment ko. Right? So, light and dark cycles change the content of the 5-HT in the pineal brain independently as I told you manufactures its own serotonin. So, let us go over the process of brain locations, the synthesis and the behaviors as we have done for norepinephrine, dopamine etc. In 1964, two researchers Dahlstrom and Fuchs identified a group of nuclei in the midline of the brain stem around the center of the brain stem. If this is the brain stem, let me make my hand the brain and this is the brain stem area. In the center of the brain stem, in the midline of the brain stem, they discovered this group of neurons, this bunch of neurons. And this bunch of neurons, they were like little islands connected but separate. Um, let me give another example, perhaps that would be closer to your, you know, islands ni dekhe ve na, to kun kali samaj na muskil hoga. To hum karte hain ki is tarah se hain, jis tarah anguro ka guchha hota hai. To yahaan par, ye anguro ke guchho ki tarah ek, ek network hai. So like a bunch of grapes, connected but separate nuclei, groups of nuclei here, in the midline. And this they called the Raffae system. R A P H E, Raffae system, and there were, as they called it, the 5 H T nuclei, serotonergic nuclei, and there were ascending bundles going up. There is one big pipeline, this ka mein hamisha zikar karti hu, the medial forebrain bundle, uske andar jis tarah norepinephrine ka ja raha hai, और बाकी न्यूरोट्रांसमिटर्स के जा रहे हैं और बाकी फाइबर सिस्टम जा रहे हैं ये भी मीडियल फोरब्रेन बंडल के अंदर बंद होके ऊपर जा रहा है तो सेरोटोनिन असेंडिंग फाइबर बंडल्स गोइंग अप फ्रॉम द ब्रेन स्टेम कहां जा रहे हैं अब दो तीन बड़े इंपॉर्टेंट एरियाज हैं और उससे फिर आपको खुद अंदाजा हो जाएगा कि ये किन-किन फंक्शंस में इन्वॉल्वड है पहला जो फंक्शन है अब पहला जो एरिया है वो है पहला एरिया रेटिकुलर फॉर्मेशन क्यों इंपॉर्टेंट होगा रेटिकुलर फॉर्मेशन में सेरोटोनिन के न्यूक्लिया का जाना रेटिकुलर फॉर्मेशन क्या करता है अरे भाई याद रखें रेटिकुलर एक्टिवेटिंग सिस्टम जब जगाना हो तो एक्टिवेटिंग सिस्टम कीप्स यू अलर्ट सोने के वक्त रेटिकुलर एक्टिवेटिंग सिस्टम गोज डाउन so perhaps this is involved in sleep. Ab is cheez ko aapne lik lena ke because I am going to come back to it in about 5 to 7 minutes. So kone mein margin mein lik le sleep, reticular formation, sleep. Then it is involved in hypothalamus. Hmm, hypothalamus kyo? Hypothalamus mein aapke paas bohat sare functions hai, survival functions hai, sleep bhi hai. लेकिन उसके साथ साथ हाइपोथैलेमस में रेगुलेटरी मोटिवेशनल स्टेट्स वाले सिस्टम्स भी हैं। तो विल कम बैक टू इट 
yes it is involved in major regulatory functions. Here lateral geniculate nuclei, LGNs, thalamus mein, visual system, yaad hai mene iske baare mein baat ki thi. So, phir relate karte hain hum isko sleep ke saath. Aankhe band kab hoti hain, jau aap so rahe hote hain. Right? So, we will need to have the lateral geniculate nuclei input for major functions which are being carried on by serotonin. Preoptic area again of the thalamus, hypothalamus important in again functions of day and night cycles, diurnal cycles, wagara, wagara. hippocampus and cortex. Again, we see a critical and a crucial role in sleeping and awakening or cyclic behavior jo hai, usme important. Aske descending jo fibers hai, they go down into the spinal cord. So, ascending are going to reticular formation, to the hypothalamus, to the LGN, to the preoptic area, to the hippocampus and to the cortex. So, they spread out right up to the cortex and they go down into the spinal cord. Kitna ye iska control hai aur kitna wide control hai. Rafa nuclei ke basically four groups hai. But all pass through the medial forebrain bundle. Ab ye aap naam sun le, dekh le, pad le. Itna yaad rakhye ga ke koon sa kis function ke liye important hai. Aur kaha jata hai. Rafa nuclei dorsalis pehla wala it goes up into the neocortex which is cortical ear and the rafe nuclei dorsalis goes into the neocortex the olfactory bulb so khushbu relate karna emotions ke saath thalamus amygdala again emotions memory hippocampus substantia nigra relating to slowing down of motor behaviors and locus ceruleus again awakening ke saath then the second group, nucleus centralis superior, again goes up into the cerebral cortex, hippocampus, and there is another area which is suprachiasmatic nuclei, SCN. And SCN, wo nuclei hai, jis mein aapke day or night cycles ke saath, or diurnal cycles ke saath, birds or uh, baki animals mein SCN bahut important hai. So sleep, Awakening, day, night, is sara serotonin, is nucleus centralis superior ke through relate karta hai. Anterior hypothalamus, medial optic area, and of course other areas like rafe dorsalis, aapas mein bhi inki baat chit hoti hai. Nuclear rafe magnus, jo ke tisra rafe nuclea hai, serotonergic pathway, medulla mein jata hai, piche, anterior hypothalamic area mein jata hai, upar. इसके बाद दो और छोटे-छोटे लेकिन बड़े इम्पोर्टेंट एरियाज हैं। एक है न्यूक्लियर राफे ऑब्स्क्यूरस। इतना ज़्यादा उसके बारे में नहीं मालूम, लेकिन इतना मालूम है कि LSD की एक्शन यहाँ पे होती है। This is the only system on which LSD and what is LSD? LSD, lysergic acid diethylamide, that powerful hallucinogen, जो टिमथी लियरी और 60s में वो इस्तेमाल करते थे as a drug of recreation. Hippies, wo yahan par act karti hai in the rafe nucleus obscurus. Iske baad rafe pallidus bhi ek hai, chota sa. But that contains substance P. Substance P is a substance or a neurochemical which is involved in pain or the perception of pain. Or but this goes down into the spinal cord. So rafe pallidus, ke fibers go down into the spinal cord. Banta kaise hai? हमने न्यूरोएनाटॉमिकल लोकेशन चार देख ली बंदा कैसे है बनता ऐसे है पहला स्टेप है बाकी सब की तरह इसमें भी हम स्टेप वाइज जाएंगे स्टेप 1 में ट्रिप्टोफैन ट्रिप्टोफैन इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप इन द सिंथेसिस इट एंटर्स द सेल इन कंपटीशन विद फेनल एनालीन वी नो फेनल एनालीन राइट एंड एज आई टोल्ड यू अर्लियर द डेली वेरिएशन और डेली अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ ट्रिप्टोफेन डिपेंड्स अपॉन योर डेली कंजम्पशन ऑफ बनानास ऑफ मिल्क ऑफ रेड मीट ऑफ पाइनएप्पल और सब्सटेंसेस व्हिच आर हाई ऑन सेरोटोनिन 
तो डेली वेरिएशन होती है आप केले नहीं खाओगे दूध नहीं पियोगे तो जो बिहेवियर्स इस पर डिपेंडेंट है उनको कम सेरोटोनिन मिलेगा ओके सो हैविंग सेट दैट फर्स्ट लेट मी गो बैक अगेन ट्रिप्टोफैन इज द फर्स्ट स्टेप इन द सिंथेसिस इट्स अ प्री कर्सर एंड ट्रिप्टोफैन एंटर्स द सेल इन कॉम्पिटिशन विद फेलन एलालीन एंड द सेकेंड स्टेप इज ट्रिप्टोफैन इज हाइड्रोक्सीटेड इमीजिएटली इट इज हाइड्रोक्सीटेड एट द फिफ्थ पोजिशन ऑफ द मालिक्यूल हाइड्रोक्सिल अटैच होता है मॉलिक्यूल एट द फिफ्थ पोजिशन सिर्फ इतना आपको फिफ्थ पोजिशन इसलिए बताना जरूरी है बाकी आई डोंट वॉन्ट यू टू गो इन टू दैट केमिस्ट्री बट जिस सिर्फ इसलिए कि इसका नाम फिर आगे से फाइव हाइड्रोक्सी ट्रिप्टो फैन हो जाएगा फाइव हाइड्रोक्सी ट्रिप्टो फैन इज हाइड्रोक्सीटेड बाय बाय वॉट ट्रिप्टो फैन हाइड्रोक्सीस भाई ट्रिप्टो फैन हाइड्रोक्सीस हाइड्रोक्सीट्स ट्रिप्टोफैन एट द फिफ्थ पोजिशन है ना तो अब ये हमारा जब बन गया इसको हम ब्लॉक कर सकते हैं बाय ए सब्सटेंस विच इज पी सी पी ए पी सी पी ए को अगर हम इट्स क्वाइट अ माउथफुल लेट मी से इट पैरा फ्लोरो फेनल एलानीन पी सी पी ए ये मैं आप बाकी जगह जितनी दफा बात करूंगी आई जस्ट टॉक अबाउट पी सी पी ए लेकिन PCPA का जो पूरा केमिकल नाम है दैट इज पैरा फ्लोरो फैनल एलानीन पी सी पी ए कम्पीट्स विथ ट्रिप्टोफैन फॉर दिस एंजाइम विच इज ट्रिप्टोफैन हाइड्रोक्सीस अगर हम पी सी पी ए का इंजेक्शन दे दें तो हम एक इंजेक्शन से कम अज कम एक हफ्ते के लिए या दो हफ्ते के लिए सेरेटोनिन को बिल्कुल ब्लॉक कर सकते हैं वाई बिकॉज पी सी पी ए टेक्स अप ट्रिप्टोफैन हाइड्रोक्सीस सो दैट ट्रिप्टोफैन के नॉट बी देन ट्रांसफर्ड और सिंथिसाइज इन टू द सब्सटेंसेज विच विल इवेंचुअली बिकम सेरेटोन सो इट ब्लॉक्स द प्रोसेस ऑफ सिंथिस अ वेरी पावरफुल एजेंट पी सी पी ए वन टू हंड्रेड मिलीग्राम पर किलोग्राम इंजेक्शन विल डिक्रीज द लेवल्स ऑफ फाइव एच टी एंड कंप्लीट रिकवरी इन रैट्स टेक्स वीक्स हाउ डू आई नो आई डन इट उनको इंट्रोगेस्ट्रिक इंजेक्शन दिया पी सी पी ए का और उसके बाद वो सारे चूहे बिल्कुल डिप्रेस होकर बैठे रहे और हफ्तों तक उनकी वो सेरेटोन की लेवल वापस नहीं आई तो वेरी पावरफुल कंट्रोल ऑफ और ब्लॉकर ऑफ पी सी पी ए सेप्ट थ्री इमिजिएटली जब फाइव एच टी पी बन जाता है फाइव हाइड्रोक्सी ट्रिप्टोफैन विच इज द स्टेप टू वर्ड्स मेकिंग सेरेटोन ये जब हमारे पास आ जाता है तो क्या होता है इसको इमिजिएटली इट इज डी कार्बोक्सीटेड अगेन डी कार्बोक्सीटेड कार्बोक्सिल ग्रुप इसमें से निकाल देता है कोई भी सब्सटेंस वो क्या चीज है वो क्या एंजाइम है याद करें हमने डोपा में भी तो ये बात की थी डोपा डीबा कार्बोक्सीस है ना तो इसी तरह का एक सब्सटेंस है इट इज अ सिमिलर डी कार्बोक्सीटिंग एजेंट एज डोपा एंड हैज द सेम प्रोटीन्स एज इन द कैरटोकोलम मीन्स इट इज कॉल्ड एल अमीनो एसिड डी कार्बोक्सीस एंड इमिजिएटली वेन इट इज डी कार्बोक्सीटेड फाइव हाइड्रोक्सी ट्रिप्टोफैन में से कार्बोक्सिल ग्रुप निकाल देते हैं तो क्या रह जाता है फाइव हाइड्रोक्सी ट्रिप्टामीन अब ये ट्रिप्टोफैन से ट्रिप्टामीन बन गया अमीन सो कैट दिस बिकम्स देन फाइव हाइड्रोक्सी ट्रिप्टामीन विच इज सेरेटोन तो सेरेटोन इज फाइव एच टी अब ये कहीं लिख लें बार बार लिख लें अगला स्टेप इसका अब बन गई सेरेटोन इसका लास्ट स्टेप ये है इसको डीएमिनेट करना या इसको कैटाबलाइज करना इसको ब्रेक डाउन करने के लिए क्या चाहिए कौन सब्सटेंसेस हैं जो इसको ब्रेक कर सकते हैं आपको याद है डीएमिनेटिंग सब्सटेंसेस कौन कौन से थे मोनो एमिन ऑक्सीडेस मोनो एमिन ये भी मोनो एमिन है तो इसको भी मोनो एमिन ऑक्सीडेस ऑक्सीडाइज करेगा और इसका मेटाबोलाइट का नाम क्या होगा अब ये भी बड़ा लंबा नाम है लेकिन पहले आपका इसका ब्रिविएशन लिख लो 
फाइव एच फाइव तो साथ ही रहेगा हमारे फाइव एच आई डबल ए अब इसका पूरा एलेबरेट लिखते हैं क्या है ये फाइव हाइड्रोक्सी इंडोल असीटिक एसिड आसान है ना फाइव हाइड्रोक्सी इंडोल असीटिक एसिड अब फिफ्थ पोजीशन पे हाइड्रोक्सी इंडोल हो क्योंकि ये इंडोल है इंडोलामीन था असीटिक एसिड में ट्रांसफॉर्म हो गया और ये किसी काबिल नहीं रहा अब ये निकाल दिया तो द मेटाबोलाइट आफ्टर द डी एमिनेशन बाय माओ सेरेटोनिन बिकम्स द मेटाबोलाइट ऑफ सेरेटोनिन इज कॉल्ड फाइव एच आई डबल ए एंड दिस इज फाउंड इंटरेस्टिंगली इन द यूरिन एंड द ब्लड ऑफ सुइसाइड विक्टिम्स जिन्होंने सुइसाइड कमिट कर लिया है उनके अंदर ये मेटाबोलाइट नजर आता है इसे क्या आप अंदाजा लगाएंगे सही अंदाजा लगाएंगे कि डिप्रेशन में यहां से पता चलता है कि सेरेटोनिन भी प्लेज अ मेजर रोल स्पेशली इन दोज हु आर प्रोन सुइसाइड अब आगे चलते हैं यहां पर ये विल कम टू द बिहेवियर्स लेटर बट आगे चलते हैं इन द नेक्स्ट स्टेप जिस तरह हम बाकी सीरीज ऑफ न्यूरो ट्रांसमीटर्स के साथ कर रहे हैं कि पहले हम बताते हैं कि न्यूरो एनाटोमिकल लोकेशन क्या है फिर हम बताते हैं कि उसके सिंथेसिस के स्टेप्स क्या है अब फिर हम बताते हैं कि ड्रग्स के साथ इंटरेक्शन क्या है सेरेटोनिन की सो ड्रग्स एंड फाइव एच टी First of all, rezepine is a substance which will interact with 5-HT as it does with dopamine, as it does with norepinephrine, and in a big way. And rezepine is a tranquilizing agent. It affects all the storage vesicles, dopamine, norepinephrine, and 5-HT ruptures them. So, ये सवाल मैं आपके पास आज छोड़के जा रही हूँ, और अगली क्लास में इस पे बात करेंगे. ये फिर अगर ये न्यूरो ट्रांसमिटर नॉन स्पेसिफिक है अगर रेजोपेन इज नॉन स्पेसिफिक फॉर रपचरिंग एनी स्पेशल न्यूरो ट्रांसमिटर वेसिकल तीनों को वो रपचर करता है तो फिर हम हाउ डू वी पिन पॉइंट दैट इट इज ड्यू टू फाइव एच टी और इट इज ड्यू टू डोपामेन और इट इज ड्यू टू नोरपन सो वी विल लीव at this point i will come back in the next class and will solve this riddle by very logical sequence of experimentations to show where rezepine is involved and how but suffice it to say serotonin is a very important neurochemical it is as you can see important in sleep awakening day and night cycles etc etc so learn to respect your glass of milk every day and as your grandmother used to say doodh ka glass pee ke so gaye to neend achhi aayegi isme bhi kuch sachai do read these handouts and look at the pictures and we'll go back to these pictures in the next class